it may not have been as much of an issue in the early days of Linux, but like it or not, nowadays a lot of hardware requires non-free firmware. And while there are certain projects trying to address this for certain pieces of hardware, as a general rule, there is more and more hardware sitting inside of this category. And a lot of people tend to forget, and I know that I sure do, but Debian takes a pretty hard default stance against this non-free firmware. So when you want to download a Debian ISO, right now we're on installing Debian via the internet. The ISO you're going to download here has none of this non-free firmware. So if you have, say, a weird Wi-Fi card, for example, that requires some of this firmware, it is not going to function. But at the bottom of this page, there is a warning about this. If any of the hardware in your system requires non-free firmware to be loaded with the device driver, you can use one of the tarballs of common firmware packages or download an unofficial image including these non-free firmwares, instructions how to use the tarballs, and general information about loading the firmware during installation can be found in the installation guide. As for these unofficial installation images, it takes you to this page right here. And you have to go and like dig through these directories and find exactly the one you need, which I believe would be this one here. And then down the bottom of this page, you can go and download it. That's only if you make your way to this page in the first place. If you go from the Debian.org website and you go to download, it doesn't actually give you a clear indication of needing the unofficial image. It is on the page, but it's just part of the regular text. So due to the limitations the standard ISO has on a lot of hardware configurations, I've noticed that a lot of people out there when talking about installing Debian tend to default to just using the non-free ISO. But this distinction might be coming to an end very soon. So after a couple of months of discussing what should and should not be included, Debian has opened up a general resolution, a vote on non-free firmware. There are three proposals available. The first one by Steve McIntyre. We will include non-free firmware packages from the non-free firmware section of the Debian archive on our official media, installer images and live images. The included firmware binaries will normally be enabled by default where the system determines that they are required, but where possible we will include ways for users to disable this at boot, boot menu option, kernel, command line, things like that. When the installer slash live system is running, we will provide information to the user about what firmware has been loaded, both free and non-free, and we'll also store that information on the target system such that users will be able to find it later. The target system will also be configured, target system being the system you're installing to, configured to use the non-free firmware component by default in the apt sources list. So you'll easily be able to go and download that non-free firmware without having to go and add it into the apt list. Our users should receive security updates and important fixes to firmware binaries just like any other installed software. We will publish these images as official Debian media, replacing the current media sets that do not include the non-free firmware packages. So rather than having a non-free and a free installer, there will only be one installer like most other distros do. The second proposal is by Gunner Wolf which is an absolutely incredible name. Now the first and second paragraphs are exactly the same. So they're still going to be including the non-free firmware somewhere. There's still going to be ways to disable it if you don't want to have it enabled. It's still going to go and enable it inside of your sources list and things like that. What differs is the third paragraph. We'll publish these images as official Debian media. They will not replace the current media sets that do not include the non-free firmware packages, but offered alongside. Images that do not include non-free firmware will be presented more prominently so that newcomers will find them more easily. Fully free images will not be hidden away. They will be linked from the same project pages, but with less visual priority. So instead of having this link to download the free ISO right at the top here, and then for the non-free version, having to dig through this thing here and find it somewhere, or from the other side, having to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page to actually find the link to it, basically what they'd be doing is having them both displayed on the page in some way that makes them both pretty easy to find. Maybe have a description about why you might want one or the other, but making them both easy to get to.
And then Proposal C is by Bart Martins. The Debian project is permitted to make the distribution media, installer images, and live images containing packages from the non-free section of the Debian archive available for download alongside with the free media in a way the user is informed before downloading which media are the free ones. Basically, sort of the status quo, but I hope this would also include making it more clear where to find the non-free images. And you may have spotted this, but right now Proposal A has by far the most votes. Almost double Proposal B, and Proposal B is almost double Proposal C. Clearly the maintainers of Debian want this problem to be addressed in some way. Whether it's merging the ISOs together, or just making it so if you use the ISO it actually sets things up properly for you, and also is much, much easier to find. As for my thoughts on this, while I do understand the hardcore free software stance, you draw your line in the sand, you are not going to run any non-free firmware. Just ignore the stuff running on a CPU, that doesn't matter, we don't need to think about that. But when considering modern hardware, it's not really a workable stance in all cases. If you're building your system entirely around only using free firmware, you can absolutely do it. But there's a lot of cases where you don't do that, you just have a system, you want to install Debian on it, and the standard version is just not going to work. With that being said, A and B are basically the only viable solutions. Make the ISOs work like they should, and also make them very easy to find. But I don't know whether it's a better idea to have them separate or merge them together. Now, while Debian calls these non-free ISOs unofficial, they're not really unofficial. What they are is managed and hosted by the Debian team. It's not unofficial like a Debian derivative, for example. It's still very much a part of the Debian project. So with my fairly limited understanding of managing a distro or managing installation media, by limited what I mean is I know a couple of distro maintainers and I've read some forum posts, I would have to assume that managing one ISO per architecture is probably easier to do than managing multiple when it comes to things like building them, testing them, and things like that, especially because they both share a lot of similarities. The non-free version is the free version with some extra things plopped in. So there's sort of a lot of repeated work that you need to do there to get pretty much the same result. Plus the fact that when you merge them together, there's less overall load on the Debian servers. While I personally would vote for proposal A if I was involved in the project, is a perfectly fine proposal as well. And if that ended up winning, it would still be a much better situation than the current situation Debian is in. Now, if you're curious about more of a technical discussion of why this problem exists in the first place and why it's being addressed, why firmware matters and things like that, I will leave a link to a talk from DebComp 2022 where this issue was being discussed. This is 40 minutes long and it goes into way more detail than I could ever care to do. I will also leave a link to Steve's blog as well, which goes over a lot of the background for why this problem exists as well. One thing I do want to say is whoever is running DebComp videos, why is this talk unlisted? 24 people have seen this. This is a great talk and more people should be seeing it. Most of the other DevCon videos aren't unlisted. I don't know why this particular one is, but it is what it is. So if you use Debian, let me know your installation experience. Which ISO do you use? Do you use the free version? Do you use the unofficial non-free version? Or maybe you just don't even use Debian and you don't know why you're watching this video. I don't have an answer for you. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and bear pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.